Okay, so let's get into this. This video is an attempt to uh, cover some of the things that I haven't covered, but yet, uh, but questions have come forward regarding the uh, New Year's challenge. Now, one of them is an exercise that I forgot to bring up. I don't know how I forgot to. I was looking at uh, a whiteboard behind the camera there the other day when I was going through those exercises, and one that I forgot was the lunge. I don't know how I left it off the list, but I did. Those of you who know me know I can get distracted awfully easily. Okay, so with respect to the lunge, some people have this just profound aversion for the lunge. Um, <clears throat> I did too. 15 years ago I was attending a class and I had convinced the instructor that I just couldn't lunge, no I've got bad knees. And the truth was, it did hurt my knees, but only because I was doing them improperly. In fact, uh, I guess this guy thought that because I was a fitness guy that I would know enough to uh, to, to know if, I, if my knees were so bad that I couldn't do lunges. And whenever lunges came up, he'd say, okay, everybody, let's, let's do some lunges, except for you, Bobby. I know you've got knee trouble. I'll, I'll give you this to do instead. So I had even fooled him. It wasn't until sometime after that that someone showed me the proper way to lunge. Now I love them. I think they're one of the world's great exercises. What you're going for here is, when you do this lunge, there's some 90-degree angles here that can be seen once you're down. And that, those 90-degree angles would be here and here, this back leg. Okay, and so <clears throat> the mistake everybody makes is they make this front leg too acute. It's beyond 90 degrees, and right away they start feeling pressure right here, and then this one won't hit, and they go, you know what, I just don't like lunges. Well, I wouldn't like lunges either, and I didn't like lunges back when that's the way I did it. The key is to do this. You need to feel like you are over your back leg, not your front leg. If you get this way and start tilting, now this, this knee can't help but go forward, and you're going to observe the very exact wrong position that I'm, that I'm speaking out against right now. So stay back, take a big enough step so where when you get here, this knee can simply drop. That's a lunge. Okay, notice this knee is not out beyond my shoelaces. If it were, I'd be asking for trouble in my knees. All right, so that's, that's a lunge. Now, there are different ways of doing that. Maybe you can't go all the way, and that's fine. This whole challenge is not about being the baddest dude on the block and doing things the most extreme way possible. It's about finishing. It's about looking at this sheet and saying, by golly, I'm gonna do it, and if I have to modify, then I'll do so, but I'm finishing this sheet. And one way to do that is just set something up a little bit higher. Now, I do this anyway, just so, because keep, if I continue to bang my knee into the ground, it hurts, so there's that. Now, maybe that's not low enough. I would hope that you'd work toward making it low enough, but you can go to something a little higher. All right, just something to keep you going, all right? And then reward yourself later by having uh, gotten better, gotten stronger, and go lower as you go. But the big deal is to finish. And keep in mind, that lunge is each leg, unfortunately. So that's one on the right, one on the leg equals one. All right, now what else have I got here? Oh, uh, I wanna modify six inch leg raises. Some people, some, people, uh, some people have had surgery, stuff in their lower abs where they just aren't ready yet for the, the whole deal on those six inch leg raises. Keep in mind, anytime you get something beyond the pivot point, uh, as it stretches out past that, um, then it becomes effectively heavier. A good example of that is if I had a, a gallon of milk in my hand and I held it close to my chest or say within a foot of it, it wouldn't feel that heavy. But if I lengthen my arm as it increases the distance it is from my center, it becomes effectively heavier. The legs are the same way. So as we're doing these six inch leg raises, I give myself some lower lumbar support. The heaviest they can possibly be is when they're straight. All right, and so if you can't do that, don't say, well, I just can't do that one. Try bending them a little bit. There's nothing wrong with this, all right? And then reward yourself later as you progress and make this a little bit longer, all right? Uh, sky reaches, same thing. Bobby, I would like to do those sky reaches, but I just can't reach as high as you. Who cares if you can reach as high as me? This has nothing to do with me. This has, you, it has to do with doing your best, which is always good enough, okay? So it's the same thing with the, um, actually it's different from the lunges. You get credit for each one now. But if I can only go this high, then that's how high I go. But the, I'm reaching for the sky, reaching for the sky. Okay, so that's one. That's two. I didn't make it all the way, but I made it as far as I could make it. Uh, how to deal with not getting your reps in. Okay, a moment ago, uh, I decided to knock out both the curls and the Arnold's. The curls with the 25-pound dumbbells and the Arnold's with the 25-pound dumbbells. So when I started my sheet right here, I, went, I did number 25 first. All right, 25. Well, I was able to do it the first time. I'm talking about the curls. Ah, I rested a second, then I grabbed and I did the Arnold's. Those are those presses over your head. I felt really good about that. Well, the second set, I was able to do 24, 24. But by the time I got to 23, I went 25, 24, 23, fatigue had set in, and I only was able to do 15 of those curls. Well, I didn't just stop there and write 15. I rested a second and said, okay, I've got eight more to do. 
and then I did eight more, and then I marked off 23. Same thing with the Arnold. So, so don't be deflated by the fact that on your, as you're trying, looking at that big number you're gonna cross out, I can't quite get there in one go. That's okay. Just rest a second and get it in, all right? That, that's just the way these things are set up. Now, I must admit, it took me a half an hour to get 25 all the way down to 19 of each of those, and I really thought I'd get a lot farther in that amount of time, but I've only got a, a little ways to go from 18 down to one. Those start, they start flying by. Once you get down to about 13, 14, they start really going quickly. But anyway, I took a break to talk to you, and I'll finish those as soon as I get done here. How to mix and match. Oh, um, I really recommend you do two exercises at once, just like I am. And the reason for that is because then you can take advantage of something we call active rest. So if, if I were doing just the curls, for instance, I was going to do 25 reps. Well, I couldn't just as soon as I finished 25 do 24 because I need to rest. Well, that's cool. Use that rest time to work another muscle that's completely unassociated with this, or at least uh, mostly so. So what I did was I did a bicep exercise and a shoulder exercise. While this was working, this was resting, and while this was working, the other was resting, okay? So that's, that's it. Um, so I I'm going to put a sheet on uh, another document I'm gonna to put together of recommended uh, pairs of exercises that I think you can do to, uh, together. All right, uh, for instance, uh, curls and Arnold's works great. Uh, Push-ups and half squat jumps work great. Why do those work so well together? Well, because one's muscle building uh, and the other is endurance. There's cardiovascular training. So those are the high points of what I wanted to say today. Uh, I wanted to show you the lunge. I wanted to show you how to modify a little bit. Don't hesitate to ask me questions. I'm down here working out anyway. It, it takes no time at all to point that camera and talk to you, and it seems like I get a little bit more done if I do so. Hey, we're coming up. You, you remember, you're in training. You've got another day or so, and I've got to tell you something. If you think you're the only one who's starting to feel deflated already, going, you know what? I signed up for this thing. I've been telling people I'm going to do it, and now I just don't think. You've got, you've got to turn, that, turn around. Remember, doubt is something that feeds on itself, and you've got to stand up and go, no, I'm going to do it. I might not like to do it, but success means doing stuff I don't want to do. All right, that's how you set yourself apart. And that's how, at the conclusion of all this, people are going to look at you different and go, you know what? She said she was going to do this, and I doubted her, and she freaking did it. All right, be that person. You're in charge of you. So you can do as much as you want. So I'm with you. You've got a whole team with you. And I look forward to hearing how you do. All right.